Thank you. Thank you for the organizing or inviting me today. To be honest, it, it is a great, a great privilege uh, being here. Um, and I know you've been the whole week uh, discussing on advances uh, on research for development within CGIR and FTA. And I've been trying to pop in and, and get a little bit the picture of what was going on over the week. Um, and um, well, yeah, you have your internal conference with perhaps a more of a top-down approach. And I'm going to start, uh, I think I'm going to start to bring you some thoughts from the other end. Um, specifically for this talk, I, I would like to highlight somehow the problem and the challenge of research for development uh, from another point of view, uh, from, the, from the, the view of a local researcher uh, working for preservation of tropical forests, but um, that often perceives research being done without researchers from the, from the uh, local uh, or from the regions or from certain countries, or from people that are on the ground. And perhaps I'll give you some thoughts uh, that hopefully will be useful um, to, to bring some insights. Um, uh, let's have a reflection on this and discuss participation perhaps versus representation and um, I'm mostly going to share some personal experience that I've been uh, facing um, challenging stereotypes of many kind, working for research, being a scientist in the tropics and what has meant this to me um, in order to do some research and uh, hopefully some ideas to move uh, forward. Let me see if it, this works well. Um, yeah, to begin with, I really, I mean, it might sound basic, but just to remember that um, inequality is designed, it's really not an accident. And any society, we are all structured in a series of power relationships, and we are aware of that, or maybe some aren't aware of it, um, and it has multiple axes. Uh, and the fact that uh, these power relations exist create inequality. I mean, this is just a fact and it's something that we have to live with. And people occupy places according to, you know, social class, race, gender, abilities. Um, and um, uh, it is a, a reflection of a system that has been in place and multiple causes man we have to face to manage several problems. And you might be wondering why the hell am I talking about this if Vincent introduced me as a researcher in ecology. But I think this is the first time that I really bring up these kind of topics from my experience. Again, I don't do a study genders, I don't study inequality, I don't um, usually address, but I've been facing it since I work in the topic. So I just I'm bringing some of these and some of the learning lessons that I've been, um, yeah, uh, facing or, or, or learning in the process. So again, I mean, I could talk today and I'm very, very, very pleased to talk to you about all the work we've done, all the research we've done from the country, from the ground, understanding the importance of forests, deforestation, land use, land cover change, what is happening to our forests, why to preserve, what are the impacts, what are, you know, patterns, rates, drivers, how to monitor the monitoring efforts we do from the, from the ground, uh, proposed management strategies. We have even published about uh, decision support systems. And also we have, um, um, like many of the things that have been discussed over the week, we've, done, do, we've been doing some uh, attempts to influence policy. Um, and uh, whilst that, I mean, I, I could also talk a lot about fire in the tropics um, and a big debate that still is um, unsolved or or, or, or it generates a lot of uh, confusion, confusion about whether the fire in, it's, a, it's a natural um, disturbance or whether it's a catastrophe or whether it's a land, land tool management that has been traditionally used or whether it's a bit of everything. And we've been doing research on that for, for many years from, um, from Colombia, I'm based in Colombia, um, but also the northwestern part of the Amazon and, uh, and also, if we go to the Amazon, that it's perhaps one of the areas of the world that it goes more into the news. And recently, again, with the rise of uh, forest fires that are occurring. And we could talk about, you know, all the complexity, the drivers and um, all the situation that makes uh, so difficult to, to advance and solve a problem that we keep seeing it and how greed is uh, 
uh, destroying the forests of um, the Amazonia. And again, we've done a lot of research in the northwestern part of the Amazon. But now, um, whilst doing all this in ecology, and like I said, in fire ecology, in physical geography, modeling, um, we've, we've come across without, or we came across um, certain inequities. Um, well, and I want to focus perhaps on two today, or, or perhaps three, and just bring some, some insights onto that. Um, on the left slide, it's, it's just a picture of um, some illicit crops um, in the Amazon, and, and there's um, uh, a discussion we brought at some point a few years ago uh, uh, whether or about the impact of development projects on policies. And there's, this, is, there's, this is paper that I recommend you if you're interested in. in it is really challenging for some people that see uh, development projects um, in, a, in a different perspective, but it challenges a bit the fact that illicit crops, coca cultivation in the northwestern part um, of the Amazon and in the Andean Amazon area, uh, share a common origin in projects that were um, funded by international cooperation. And there's a big discussion on that. There's a discussion whether um, really uh, the origin is in the 60s and 70s and whether uh, illicit crops um, uh, was a result of displacing farmers and uh, whether it's localized and linked to, to those intended um, promotions of migration to the forest frontier for development projects that unintentionally stranded hundreds of colonists in the Amazon. And then all the crises in Latin American countries um, uh, made a little bit the, 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 uh, the countries to experience some debt crisis and withdrawing the support of people that were forced to go to that area and then, the, then later turn to coca. Anyway, this is just an idea of what I want to bring you in some discussions that there are several ways of seeing these problems. And on the other um, graph, um, this is a, 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 another inequity, very a strong inequity issue that we have in certain countries, which is the land distribution. And it shows uh, basically that it, this is a, the case for Colombia, and, and, and we could repeat it in many parts of the world, um, how the proportion of productive farms um, and land is distributed per, per property and per uh, percentage of landholders. 1% holds 81% of the properties in Colombia. Half of the country is in 1% of the smallholders. So this is a big, big inequity and um, inequity that needs uh, to be solved, that roots the deforestation problems in, uh, in several of the, um, the countries. I mean, I'm talking again about South America, but I'm sure that we'll see similar patterns somewhere else. And it has to do a lot with institution and, and societal um, uh, issues and problems that um, no matter where you are doing research, you have to take into account or you're facing all the time and you cannot ignore and uh, act on it. So anyway, uh, this is just some, some, some background also to talk about two, perhaps two of the things that I'm gonna uh, focus more. And one is um, the visibility problem of science from the global south. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying it like this because there's the, it does covers many aspects. Um, in theory, science has you know, no limit, no gender, no body, no or origin, it doesn't matter where you are. That's a theoretical part. But the fact is that um, uh, from my experience, again, I'm talking from my experience as a women scientist doing science from a, a, a global South country, um, uh, it, it, when it's perceived from a privileged position, you don't see what is seen from the ground in terms of, of that kind of visibility. And it has to do with hierarchies at, the, at different levels, also has to do with what this uh, Asha DeVos published, it's related to, um, more on conservation um, uh, projects than, than science in general, but it was a very interesting recent um, um, article for discussion about the problem of colonial science. And, and it was really interesting to see that in many places of the world, you researchers are feeling the same uh, kind of parachuting science, colonial science, people coming uh, to get some information out of you or just coming for a few, a few days and going away. And, um, and that, that has uh, uh, a big implication on how we do what we do and uh, what motivates people to do and how um, 
certain uh, imbalances uh, can be frustrating and at the same time can be a challenge for many people. Anyways, the problem of colonial science is something that uh, needs to be considered because still have, uh, we face many of that attitude uh, often and is really uh, a role that is expected from, from scientists in the global south that we more and more are less willing to do or to, to accept. Um, and talking about other biases where you base, it does matter. And I remember on the first uh, opening plenary, there was a talk about science credibility. And it really, it really, I, I thought, oh yeah, that's true. I mean, it's not only that you have the English as a problem, which I mean, that's, uh, uh, it makes you having to work twice to publish things um, in science. This is an example of um, um, ecological, um, related papers, yeah, I mean, you could see the number of submitted and accepted papers that you, you can see them balance there. Um, but also is the credibility. I mean, if you are submitting, when you're submitting research done from a local institution, they, they question you much uh, more than uh, if you were signing from one of those big uh, blue balloons on the map. Um, so uh, it's really one thing that you, we have to take into account. And um, that, I mean, competition in science is the base of inequality because you're already starting with some um, different opportunities and different conditions. But even, the, you know, the, not, 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 locals sometimes are not really considered or are just, a, you know, a quota on, on, a, on a publication or sometimes um, just to, yeah. Four more minutes. Oh dear. Um, anyway, the pipeline, the visibility is also has to do with problems with uh, women and science. Uh, women, again, whoever says that the, your gender or your body hasn't influenced the way you act in science, uh, I think hasn't had to face uh, things that most women scientists have to face. Anyway, there's a pipeline and we have this bias that there's a visibility problem. I want to bring this example. This is a paper that was published by three women. Um, and uh, it has models and it has peace and it has, and, and it was really, really hard uh, to, to publish it because the reviewers were not believing in the science that was behind that. They couldn't believe that this thing was happening in Colombia. That's why I'm mixing the origin and the gender. And um, uh, because in other countries, were not, this could, was not happening. So it was really hard to believe. Um, and these biases, and I'm just going to move a little bit faster, these biases are, uh, uh, and the power inequalities are not only from the global to the, to the local. Uh, nationally, we also have some kind of uh, similar issues. I mean, this is just some examples of, of, of publishing things very important and very related to, to Colombian science and being questioned by local authorities and um, yeah, uh, stakeholders that are in power in place within um, institutions politically influence very strongly within the country. So it's not a matter only of global, but it's something that we need to recognize. Um, this is an example also of that it doesn't matter where you are, you can influence and do changes. This is a, a, one of the uh, bills that it's uh, currently being discussed in in the Congress about uh, how to integrate fire management in the country. And it was uh, from the bottom up. It was really done by communities. It was as a project to the Senate and doing research. But whilst doing that in the public hearing, then you get this big NGO, um, international NGO saying, why didn't you call us? What? They, they were telling the Congress, why didn't you call us? We are the experts. And the Congress said, look, this is, this is an, a citizen initiative managing a bill. You could have done it. I mean, we don't have to go to you to call you to, to give us uh, your expertise. Um, and well, uh, first of all, the, uh, um, we need to acknowledge that it's a privilege to work in another country that is not our own country. Uh, we would like to... Um, One more minute. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to bring up some of the inequities in, in conditions to do research, but I don't think I'm going to have enough time. But also I want to just bring some points about going beyond um, makeup. And it's not about, I mean, we have done and we have seen a lot of advance in bringing down some inequity, but it's not a matter of image. It's not to have a quota on your publication. It's not to uh, just do some images. It's, it's much more than that. And um, just to bring some points, which I'm going to pass quickly, um, I think we have to break that paradigm 
about knowledge deficit and capacity in the um, capacity of development needs in the global south. I, I don't. I think we have to change a little bit more that there's a lot of capacity in these countries that needs to be incorporated. We need to recognize the exclusion, and 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 really break those power asymmetries, um, which I think there are many. And again, like I said, they are at multiple scales, um, but uh, it has to be addressed upfront. Uh, from the beginning, even when you start designing something. Um, we're not talking about networks and centralization of networks, but this is something that we also have to do. Um, I would suggest that uh, the funding, funding and governance arrangements from the beginning need to have participation of all uh, stakeholders. We have to incorporate much better the different perspectives, backgrounds and skills from local researchers. We're not doing it and we're thinking uh, participation versus representation uh, because we need to make more, even more local relevant solutions uh, to uh, bigger problems and trust in local solutions. Uh, so just, um, um, I do really believe that some systems need to be uh, structurally changed and um, yeah, uh, I would like to share my many more experiences with you, but then again, I'll just leave these few ideas for you to think about. Thank you.